Hi, it's Brenda at Pioneer Mountain Homestead. And today we are talking about bottle feeding kids. And Mary has volunteered. <laughs> Mary is one of three kids that were born to our goat, Annie. And uh, the other two are Peter and Paul. Yes, Peter, Paul, Mary, <laughs> I'm dating myself. But Mary uh, didn't quite get as big as the two boys as quickly and kind of got pushed aside and she's not getting enough nutrition. So it's not that the mother doesn't want to feed her, it's just that the two boys won't let her near to, to get enough to eat. So we are supplementing her with milk. Now there's other reasons you may have a bottle baby. Uh, you might have a doe that, that dies at birth. We've been doing this for 17 years and I've had one actually that died in birth and that obviously was a bottle baby. If you do have to bottle feed right from the start, you have to make sure they get the first milk, which is the colostrum milk. And you can get powders that you can mix in with your milk so that the baby gets the colostrum. They need to get that in the first 24 hours. After that, you could just feed them the regular kid milk, or I also use a product called Ultra 24, which is from Save a Calf. Both Monopro kid milk and Save a Calf Ultra 24 I've used and both are really good milks for feeding your baby goats. So uh, Mary here happens to be a Nigerian dwarf goat. They are a miniature breed. They give excellent, excellent milk. They're great for a homestead because they are small. They only get to be, I'm going to say my largest is probably 100 pounds, but most of them are more like 60 to 80 pounds in that range at full size. So they're really a nice homestead goat. Their feed to milk conversion rates are really good. So we like them here. There are other goats out there, different breeds, that probably give more amounts of milk. When I'm milking the, um, the does, I usually get about a quart, a little over a quart for each milking. So two quarts a day, two and a half quarts. And some of them give a little more than that, some are a little less, but that's about where it's coming in at. So uh, we're gonna feed this little girl here. And some of the things you probably need to know when you're gonna bottle feed, first of all, when kids are born, um, they are ruminants, so they have four stomachs. The rumen, the reticulum, the omasum, and the abomasum. Kids have an oversized abomasum and an undersized rumen, and for good reason. The abomasum is the true stomach, and that's what's needed to digest milk. You need stomach acid to digest milk. The rumen is more like a fermentation chamber, and as the kid grows, the rumen gets larger, the abomasum gets smaller. But when they're born, the abomasum is the largest, and basically they have a way of diverting the milk right into that stomach. It basically by, kind of bypasses the rumen and the reticulum and goes into the um, uh, mesum and the abomasum stomach. The abomasum is the one that digests the milk. So you don't feed an adult goat milk and you don't feed a kid hay <laughs> because it wouldn't work with their stomachs. So that's one thing you probably need to know. And this little girl will be on milk. Usually I do two months with the boys and three months with the girls. The girls seem to just grow a little slower for me. I don't, I don't know. And, the, the two months or three months, that's debatable. Some people say less. I go the full amount because I think it gives a healthier goat. So anyhow, are you? do you want to try eating here, sweetie? Mm -hmm. So this is, I pre-mix the milk. It basically comes in a powder format and you mix it with warm water. It should be about 103 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can just test it on your wrist just like you would for a baby. Blood warm is what I would call it. And on these bottles, there is a little hole down here on the yellow part, and that needs to remain open when they're sucking on this or they won't get any milk out. Um, this is a, a flutter valve nipple. Oh, when you first get these, don't forget to trim that little thing off. You would not believe how many times I go to feed a goat with a brand new bottle and I forget to take the little tip off. So you gotta take a little tip off in order for them to drink. Look, she's, she's anxious. She's like, give me the milk. 
and basically I don't have too much problem getting them to latch on. Some people have had problems and sometimes you can just use um, use good judgment, try to figure out something that they might like. Maybe even put some milk on the nipple so that they know that's where they're going to get it from. And off, off to the races. Are you going to stand on your own or are you going to let me hold you? <laughs> so Mary here, she's drinking about two-thirds of a cup of milk with each feeding. And basically when they're first born, I feed them around the clock. Like if I have one where, the one where like the mother died, I fed that one every two to three hours all the time for the first week or so until I could get it to more of a four hour shift where I could feed every four hours. The commercial uh, facilities still do like eight or 12 hour shifts, which I don't quite agree with because I think it actually builds too much milk into the stomach. And if you do get too much milk in the stomach, it can back up into the rumen and then you have a real problem on your hands because the rumen can't digest the milk right it basically rots in the rumen and uh just not a good situation but in commercial situations that's what they do because it's logistics basically for them and um they're, they're more about money i'm more about the health of my goats and uh giving them the best treatment that they can have and getting them started on the right foot and she's she's actually pulling this down from me um they do like to, to really push on, you know, pull at the, at the uh, bottle. Now, I will tell you this, sometimes you'll get a kid that's a little aggressive and they'll cover that little air hole and then they won't get anything out and they'll get really frustrated. So you kind of have to make sure that they don't cover the air hole. She'll take a break every so often. Yep, you're falling off. <laughs> yes, I know. Mm -hmm. She's kind of sleepy, I think, because I woke her up. So this little girl is probably two, a little over two weeks, and she's doing feedings about every four hours. Every night, I usually feed her like around midnight last, and then I'll get up around six-ish and feed her again. So she's getting down to about every four to six hours. Right now, she's doing about two-thirds of a, of a bottle, two-thirds of a cup of two-thirds of a cup, not two-thirds of a bottle, two-thirds of a cup of milk with each feeding. She's just, she's very little. She's a little bit smaller. She's a lot smaller, actually, than the two boys. They, they've they been on mom, and they're, uh, and the mother is a really good milker, so they're really getting big and strong. She just kind of got pushed, um, pushed behind a little, and, uh, and she was the smallest, actually, when she was born. She was much smaller than the other two, so that's part of the problem with her falling behind but i think she's going to do okay now when they eat or when they drink the milk it goes into that that last stomach the abomasum and it basically combines with enzymes and forms like a gel in there almost like, like cheese basically that's where we get stuff to make cheese <laughs> so yeah it it'll form like this cheesy like substance and that's what um, we'll end up feeding them throughout the next several hours so she's taking a break here. I think I went over this earlier, but uh, like I said, the two products that we use are Save a Calf Ultra 24. It's a multi-species milk. And then we also use Monopro uh, Kid Milk and Monopro Colostrum. Now, oh, I did want to say this. You can't keep these in a sterile environment. They need to go back in with the mother if they can, or at least be... Um, they need to have hay available, water available. They probably won't drink any of the water anyway because they're getting milk. And they need to have mineral available as part of their growth cycle. Uh, the hay is important because it actually provides them with bacteria. And you think, ooh, bacteria. No, that's actually a good thing. That gets into their system and starts their rumen functioning. So as they're growing, the abomasum is getting smaller, the rumen is getting larger, and the rumen is getting this great bacteria from the hay. And if they're nursing off a mom, they get it from the mom. Um, but that's very important for them to uh, get that rumen started. So she gets plenty of hay supplied to her. She's out with her, her brothers most of the day. At night, I bring her in. I just put her in a little dog crate, and uh, she's really good. She spends the night inside and uh, she's in there she's got a little pile of hay and she's all happy <laughs> but um 
Yeah, on, I just get tired going out to the barn in the middle of the night and we have bears and coyotes. So I'd rather just keep her in with me overnight and then just take her back out during the day with her, her brothers and her mother. And uh, then I just go out and I fetch her uh, about every four hours and, and feed her. So, and one thing that will happen, do you want to try some more, sweetie? Hey, want to try some more? Hey, want to try some more? We're going to go for some more? One thing that will happen is when they finish eating, you'll start seeing them shiver. And what's happening there is because their stomachs are so full, all the blood is rushing to their stomachs to help with digestion. I'm not going to eat. There we go. <laughs> She's not just going to stand to eat. She's like one of the few that I've seen do this. That she likes to lay down. She's making little noises. But... Um, Anyhow, they'll start to shiver. And basically what's happening is the the uh, blood is going to their stomach and it's chilling them a little bit. So they're shivering because they're cold. Are we good there? <laughs> now what you're going to do is, well, there's all kinds of charts you can look at. And actually I have one in a blog on our website. I'll, I'll include a link. Basically what you want to do is work up to a certain point with the milk and the feedings. And then when you're getting close to where you want to wean them off, you're going to work kind of backwards. You're going to give them less and longer time frame in between each until basically they are off the bottle. Now, if they're on the mom, if they're a buck, I take them off at two, two months. But what I normally do is I take, that's all you want? Okay. I take the, um, like when I'm getting about a week away from when I want to separate them, I will take the bucks or the does and separate them from the mom. And so I don't have to listen to them screaming all day because they're separated. What I do is put them in the, the pen right next door so they can see each other, but they can't feed off of her. And then I will milk the doe, the mama doe, while the kids, I'll, I'll milk basically the mom and doe before I put the kids back in with her. So basically it's kind of like a 12 hour on, 12 hour off thing going on there. And I'll do that for about a week. And then I kind of slow it down. And usually they adjust pretty good that way. If, if you like gradually increase the time and less time with mom and, you know, they realize that they're on their own and having them in pens that are next to door to one another really, really helps because they can see each other. They don't bawl. If you put them in two pens that are like way across the barn from one another, you're just going to listen to bawling all day. And then, you know, they bawl and mom calls and yeah, it, it's just a, a whole uh, serenade of goat bawling. <laughs> so I usually just stick them side by side and that has worked so great for me. And uh, as they grow up, then they, uh, they, they usually um enjoy that side by side until they're older and then you can move them around and they're they're all fine um but i just i hate that bawling it sounds horrible <laughs> it just tears my heart out hearing them ball when they're separated from their mom this is the most peaceful goat that i think i've ever bottle fed most of them are more active than she is she's just kind of relaxed but she actually has the personality of her her daddy goat her mom is very very um, very loud, <laughs> very determined, and very uh, ornery. <laughs> her mother is, uh, she's, she's just a brat, but her daddy is very, very laid back. So she's, she's kind of got the pattern of her mommy. She's got the blue eyes like her daddy, and she is polled, which means she won't get horns. Her mother has horns, but her daddy does not have horns. So, um, yeah, she's not going to have any horns. Because normally you would see them at this point and there's the, nothing is coming through. So I'm pretty sure she's pulled. Yeah, I think that's about it for uh, for bottle feeding. I'm sure there's a lot of things I might have missed. But uh, yeah, basically um, that's how we do it. And uh, hope you enjoyed. Make it a great day. Bye.